Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hutan Sfeilzad. Uh, I'm working as business development officer at QBank, uh, also been uh, uh, one of the founders of the company. Sorry, I'm just trying to find my... Uh, okay, there we go. Great. So uh, QBank is a digital asset management platform. Uh, which is <clears throat> based in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, the tool has been developed since 2003. Uh, used to be part of an agency, but since 2015, it's become its own entity. And today we have global coverage uh, uh, amongst our clients. Uh, we have uh, some German-based clients, uh, US-based uh, a couple of uh, large clients in, in Asia as well, uh, but we are mostly active on, on the European markets and the Nordics. And uh, we work a lot with uh, different partners, uh, both tech partners and SIs. And today we have more than 55 uh, partners and around 60 different integrations and uh, connectors to other tools with within MarkTech. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, present you with uh, what QBank does in terms of automation of assets and distribution of assets. Uh, and exactly what is a an, an, uh, digital asset. In this case, we are of course talking about product photos, uh, but also documentation uh, around products and videos, logotypes, icons, and so on. So what are the challenges uh, that our clients are facing and uh, that we are trying to solve with our automation? Uh, it's of course the risk of human error, uh, distributing assets to a certain channel or to a certain tool uh, where these assets should not be available. Um, also, with no automation, uh, you would have time-consuming processes, uh, and which requires lots of manual work. Uh, you need to have somebody making the quality assurance and making sure that you have the right quality on assets. Um, like, do we have this photo in the right uh, resolution or not, um, and so on. Uh, not following the business rules. Uh, again, being able to distribute assets in, in a wrong channel and at the wrong time. Uh, publishing assets too early, for instance, uh, or a campaign too early uh, coming out that and that information being available to the market. Um, also the consistency and, and being on brand, uh, which means uh, whenever you're working with multiple channels such as social media, e-commerce, uh, and you have other uh, websites, uh, presentations and so on, where you have a certain asset and you upload a new version of that asset, you always want to have the same information and asset product photo, document, et cetera, being available everywhere at the same time. And also uh, using uh, automation to create personalized uh, content uh, for customers. Uh, also some of the channel challenges we've seen uh, in the market, in the digital asset management market uh, comes with the growth of uh, usage of DAM, uh, because uh, until a couple of years ago, DAM was always a tool for marketing and communications people, working with photos, videos, templates, uh, guidelines, brand assets, and so on. But during these last uh, years, we've seen growth in um, other parts of the an organization or departments uh, like R&D, where they need somewhere to store their drawings, uh, 3D files, design files. Uh, we have sales teams with their 
uh, brochures, case studies, presentations. Uh, we have uh, HR with lots of assets around employees and, and so on. Uh, we have services and support and training, working with photos of spare parts, spec sheets, safety documents, uh, training videos, uh, and so on. Um, and managing all of these different types of assets uh, has become uh, a big challenge for the users of QBank. So that's also somewhere uh, automation uh, can help uh, when it comes to both integrations, distribution of assets, but also the inbound, uh, automatically fetching information and assets uh, from other tools into the dam and then distributing it. So jumping to the uh, case study. Uh, so this is a retail client that we choose uh, for today. And uh, this uh, client is uh, based in the Nordics and it's a big retail client. Um, and <clears throat> when we started working with them, uh, they had lots of manual work uh, to update all the content in their different uh, tools. So which means that uh, they have these consumer facing uh, portals, they have their uh, in-store machines like POS weight machines, they have their supplier portals and B2B portals uh, where they need to uh, distribute their product photos, documentation, videos, and so on. And this uh, client has more than uh, 2,000 stores uh, around the uh, Nordics. So it's, it's, it was a very time-consuming process to update uh, these photos everywhere. And also, again, the consistency wasn't there. You would see different product photos available in, in different tools. Uh, so when we implemented QBank, we, we had a look at, OK, uh, how can we automate this and make sure we get better quality of assets in these channels, uh, but also making sure that you always have the same assets everywhere. So <clears throat> today, we have an inbound process where QBank uh, would fetch master data from uh, uh, from an ERP tool, and uh, it would once the data is in QBank, it would check within uh, third-party databases uh, for product photos. Uh, these third-party databases are trade solution for uh, the daily products, uh, but we also have something called Knob, which is uh, for the construction companies. Uh, so if we find any product photos there, uh, QBank will automatically import it. Uh, it will check the quality of the, uh, this product photo and automatically publish it out to the right channels. So depending on which product group this is, uh, the asset will be automatically pushed uh, to the right channel. In case, um, and, and of course, whenever we are distributing these assets and publishing them to these channels, QBank is automatically generating the right format uh, for that channel. So a weight machine, for instance, it only requires a low resolution thumbnail of a photo of an orange or an apple, for instance. Uh, but when it comes to uh, websites and e-commerce, you need to have some more high resolution uh, assets. Um, and if the assets are not, or the product photos are not available in these tools, uh, then uh, the, the product owner is sent an email uh, where he or she can decide to uh, create a so-called mood board in QBank or ask the agency for a photo shoot. And once the agency has done the photo shoot, again, or the, the vendor has uploaded photos, again, everything will be automatically imported to QBank and then distributed to the right channels based on the quality of the photo and on which channels this product should be available in. Um, there's also 
uh, as you might know, working with uh, products uh, you might have during some different seasons, Easter season or Christmas season, the pack shots of uh, these photos or oh, these products uh, can change uh, with some seasonal greetings and so on, on on the pack shots. That's also an automatic workflow where uh, QBank will uh, look on into these tools if the product photo has been changed to an, with an Easter branded uh, pack shot or a Christmas branded pack shot, it would automatically import it and distribute it. And once the expire date for that product is, uh, has passed, then that Christmas asset would be removed. And again, you would see the old pack shot of that photo. So as you can imagine, all these uh, tasks would be performed manually, uh, which required lots of attention from uh, the colleagues uh, at this uh, client, uh, but also there was inconsistency again. So um, also we have created a microservice for this client uh, where they can uh, automate the creation of assets, which means that working with um, all their members and trying to get personalized campaigns to their members have been a challenge. So uh, they wanted to use uh, our um, tool for automatically creating content so they can personalize their ads and uh, their campaigns for different clients. So if I know Putin likes Coca-Cola Zero, for instance, then he should definitely get a campaign of Coca-Cola Zero and not uh, some, some other drink, for instance. Uh, and creating all those assets with the campaign information uh, was time consuming and challenging. So, and there was, uh, they didn't have the time and the budget to, to create all those assets. So we have created a microservice that automatically, based on the campaign information uh, that we get, we will create these price bubbles. Uh, this is just an example uh, for this client. And this client has uh, 10 different brands. So each brand has its own design on these price bubbles. So these are based on the weekly campaigns, these price bubbles are automatically generated. And uh, since the product photos are the existing QBank, we're fetching the product photos from there, putting the price bubble on top of the product photo and trying to place it as, uh, position the price bubble uh, as good as possible and then distribute it out to their marketing uh, cloud platform so that whenever they send out the new campaigns in apps and via email campaigns, uh, their members would get the right product offer and not just some generic products. And so how, should, how can we get start with uh, automation? Uh, of, of uh, asset distribution and creation of assets. Um, we have some tips and tricks. So first of all, identify your inbound and outbound processes. So where do you get your assets from and where they, are they supposed to be distributed? In what channels are they supposed to be available in? And start with the most time consuming processes try to automate them, is it possible to do so? And then reiterate. Also make sure you measure your success. Okay, so once we have taken these time consuming processes, we've done some, added some automation and make sure that you get some results and see how well are we doing with, with this automation. And also check what else you can do. Are there any 
uh, new opportunities that comes with automation. So for instance, for this client that I mentioned, they, they didn't have the chance to, to create these campaign photos uh, for so many members and personalize it. So automation has opened up new op opportunities for them. And finally, make sure you automate the right process and not too much automation because uh, when it comes to digital assets and, and automation and distribution, you need to make sure that the users in the tool understand what has happened. So if you automate too much uh, in the long run, uh, people might be confused of why are these things happening uh, without any control and so on. So that's very important thing to not do everything at once. Make sure uh, start small and automate the right processes. And when you feel mature enough um, and your tool is mature enough, you would add some more automation. Great. So that's what I had to share from my side. At that point, Ben, would you join us on the panel, please? Yeah, for sure. Uh, let Hello, me mute ben. myself. Hello, Ben. Introduce yourself, please, before we will start a short discussion here. Sure, sure. I'm Ben Rund. I look after the Alliance uh, business for Syndigo. Syndigo uh, has acquired uh, Riversand, by the way, last year, which was the company I was probably known before. I've been spending 20 years in the market for data management, um, always with the goal to drive commerce, customer experience with the, uh, with the increased automation of data, which is data content for e-commerce, data about products, data about suppliers, customers, or whatever matters for creating good and fast experiences. And uh, I'm happy to be continued guest on the AX Semantics uh, Meetup series. Always a pleasure. Yeah, uh, already a friend of AX Semantics and of mine. Hello, Ben. <laughs> nice. Perfect to have you here. Um, ben is also the, the editor in chief uh, at his own blog, Hyper Automation and E-Commerce. Ben, would you like to share your blog link uh, in the chat? You already shared it, but only with the host, not with the... Ah, so I didn't know that. Ben I felt like it's maybe helpful. Once again, maybe you will win some uh, readers today. Oh, yeah. no, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder of that. I was, uh, I was thinking because uh, I think definitely one of the big trends, and we talked on that also on the AX uh, conferences and so on, is the overall hyper automation trend in e-commerce. And uh, for everyone who's looking into it, this blog shows some very good examples about what prerequisites you need to hyper automate things. I think uh, Hutan, you made good examples. You said not automate everything. Um, there is of course the, the always coming question regarding how much trust do I or my organization have in automation? Um, how, how, how can I trust my data? I'm always telling the story about make sure you have your data and content in order. The better you do the homework, the more you can automate and the more you can create efficiencies. Perfect. Um, Kian, would you join us too? Hi, yeah. My name is Kian Sodemoradi and um, I'm co-CEO of AdNexus. Um, we from AdNexus are a consulting and implementation uh, company um, in the area of uh, product information, master data management, and um, also digital asset management and CCMS in German Redaktionssysteme. Yeah. Perfect. We yeah, implement from, such systems. From your point of view, um, you see a lot of customers all the year. Um, what is the what is the most important development we see in hyper automation in automation of e-commerce? I think uh, we see it together with your solution from RX Semantics uh, to generate automatically um, content. And I think the next step uh, will be on the market to also automate um, video content, not only text and um, speech and also video. Oh, perfect. Do you have already some examples of, of customers who are already um, automized video? We have Schaefer Shop, for example, here in that round or um, Meta, for example, are working on that. 
Do you have customers that are already automating video, for example? Um, we are experimenting with uh, different solutions like uh, Colossian. Um, um, they have um, avatars and uh, very spooky <laughs> videos are generated in, in all um, languages you can think about. And it's, it's really cool and it's, um, it's really good. Not, uh, not like the deep fake video, but uh, it's, it's really good what you get an, an outcome. Bhutan, from your point of view, what, what is the next step we will take in automation of, of content, in automation of digital assets? Um, I, I agree with Kian. Uh, I mean, uh, video is the next big, big thing. Uh, but personalization is, is uh, uh, very important, making sure that the right people get the right type of content, whether if it's a video or, or if it's a, um, a photo or, or document or text. Um, also, I, I saw some campaign that was run in, in India during the pandemics uh, to help small stores sell candy. So this uh, producer, uh, they used one of the most famous uh, Bollywood stars and created deep fake videos with his face on it. And uh, so whenever you would go onto any social media channel, you would get this gentleman giving the address of the closest store to you. So you could buy that, that candy. Uh, and it was all done with uh, creation of deep fake videos. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> Do you have a link of that campaign? that we can see an example if you have please share it in the chat would be interesting i think for us uh, i don't have it right now but i can send it over to you perfect ben from your point of view what are the the, the most important developments and would you share some numbers for example from your um, point of view what is happening with personalization how important is that at the moment and yeah, very, we... very good. I'm, uh, I'm fishing for numbers regarding personalization. <laughs> Let me think about it while I talk. <laughs> uh, but overall, um, thanks for asking for numbers, because I think there is not everything is yet automated. But uh, I was a bit looking at, at our numbers, because we, we deal with uh, more than 300 million different data entities. Um, and I looked at our at numbers from last year, where we created over 4 billion okay. shopper impressions globally. That means on e-commerce landing pages. And I, I was just thinking of a webinar you did recently about the perfect product landing page, right? Where you had a, an excellent speaker uh, coming to one of the series here. So everything which lands on that page, right? And if you think you have to manage 4 billion global product landing pages, you need some level of, of automation. Um, and we see that, um, I think our platform has more than 25,000 business rules for executing data quality checks before data lands something uh, or somewhere. And when I think about the close to 2,000 marketplaces, including all global Amazon countries, for example, where we're distributing data to, um, you need a certain level of automation. And uh, I'm allowed not to share the name, but there's a, one of the world's largest brands if you look at that ranking, they publish in four seconds all their products to all their online channels with Syndigo, for example. So that means we have to use automation. But uh, I, I'm, I'm going back to the uh, the the homework topic. Uh, I think in one of the previous sessions we did here together, we looked at examples of how is your data looking and how could your outcome look when you automate it. Yeah. And uh, we also discussed the good and the bad. I think it's also included in the blog. So you can look that up on the blog. I think that just proves if you have your data and content in control, then you can automate it. And I think we made even uh, good experiences with smaller automations. For example, an automation of a product tour. Um, a product tour for us is you, you hover over a Levi's, jeans jacket and different kind of pop-ups automatically are being generated and zoom into different areas of the jacket. You, you see the nuts, uh, you see the, the, the bags and, and you have some features with it. 
These are smaller automated assets or kind of product video tools which can be generated or even simple things like comparison tables do you compare different products on a landing page? This is also a small element of automation, which gives you the information which you need. You compare it to alternatives, um, cross-sells, or a kind of uh, automated creation of a full lookbook or shop the look kind of examples. I think these are some standards which are just important now to do, and not, many, not all companies have realized that, to, to really profit from the automation based on the volumes of the data. Um, coming back to... Uh, personalization. I think the, the market has not reached by far the potential of personalization to really all the good examples, Huta and what you brought in regarding personalizing video content or others to an individual shopper. So I think there's a lot of room for everyone to, to make business there. Perfect. Yeah. How expensive is it to personalize my e-commerce shop? Give us some numbers, please. It depends on the rate of. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the wrong answer. That's the wrong. Answer. You, you can start exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can start it a few days, and um, at the end, um, a big project can also be for months. Okay, I have an idea. I yeah. have an idea. <laughs> I, mean, okay. I would say you could probably subscribe to the AX basic package, right? It's just a, a fair entry price. Combine that with your good database. And then you have the first level of personalization, uh, right? Create personalized text with the AX uh, support. But of course, that requires maybe a bigger invest in a good PIM foundation. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Well, I was asking, yes, of course, just to tell how cheap it could be to start with a personalization system with AX, for example. So, but um, Hutan, from your side, um, personalization, how important is it for your customers? What are they doing already? It's getting more and more uh, important for, especially for uh, retail customers. And uh, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a lot of that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any, any numbers to share, uh, but we, we've seen it's, it's growing a lot. And uh, yeah, you just need to have the right tools, lots of, uh, companies with uh, the rewards uh, programs, membership programs, and so on. They do have all the data about what uh, Hutan likes <laughs> okay. and what kind, of, what kind of products he likes and so on, but, but they haven't been able to capitalize on that. And, and so say so we're seeing uh, uh, growth uh, on that. Uh, by the way, I just uh, shared the video on uh, the, the YouTube video. Thanks for sharing that. Interesting. Perfect. Um, do we have questions from our attendees? So share it in the chat if you have questions. Ben, uh, we're working together on a lot of customers and uh, already we are integrating AX to, to Riversend at the moment. Um, just help us. What are the most interesting projects you're working on and you can tell us? some details on that project or some insights that are interesting for us. Very good one. And you see it's fully live, right? Uh, not scripted. So, um, and I, I've recently recognized that sometimes I'm not allowed to share names and so on. Yeah, but for sure, uh, what's, what is super fully, uh, fully fancy is that uh, more and more of the new generation companies uh, are working with us. And that uh, means companies like uh, gorillas and these kind of innovators know that standard solutions are helping them to automate their, their, their product to market uh, process. Um, but I think we, you talked about personalization and uh, we're- well, yeah, I think innovative uh, projects are quite interesting for us from the product uh, information management system side, for example, not only the automation or uh, sorry, the personalization. Yeah, yeah, fully sure. And I think what we're what we're all, all, always seeing is because that is also the foundation of personalization. It is connecting the product to the customer. It sounds like a very old story, but I remember that being smart analysts talking about that more than 10 years ago. 
Yeah. Uh, but it took a while for, for companies to accept that I have to build a foundation that I really know who is, is that Ben or Benjamin run actually? Oh, because my poor name is Benjamin. But everyone knows it as a Ben. My Facebook profile is Benjamin. But my Twitter name is Ben and my LinkedIn name is Ben. And um, is that actually the same person? So I need to understand who is a, who is a prospect, who is a customer as a foundation to personalize my content and make a re relevant offer uh, based on the location where I'm probably at. I even got a person, we helped one of our brands to make a local recommendation because I was in the nearby surroundings. I got an email which showed me, okay, thank you for being around. Uh, the shop is only a few minutes walk away. Here's the Google map in the email. And here's a lookbook recommendation based on your recent shopping activities. Now go come to our shop and uh, enrich your running look uh, equipment. And I think these are really fancy things where you really connect the dots between data and then use them actively in your marketing automation campaigns on the foundation of data, connecting a location information, a personal information and a product information together to make a smart recommendation. Then that could happen anywhere. That, could, that for me happened on my mobile phone, which uh, showed me an email and that, that brought me to the store next door because I had time for it. Uh, but it also happens on all the various landing pages um, again, coming back to that perfect e-commerce product page where you need engaging content, uh, which makes you stick, tell a story, tell a story about, we do a lot of storytelling for, about sustainability these days. Brands want to integrate how they're sustainable, what they're investing in sustainable products, just to tell the story about their green strategy, whatever is mattering. So there's a lot of content that you need to tell a story uh, whether it's a detailed thing or it's an emotional thing. So there, I think there's many, many uh, small things actually happening. Well, that's a really huge idea, a recommendation in, in that big way to, to see where are you at the moment? What are your needs at the moment? Who are you and what is my product I can recommend to you? Kian, a question. Um, how can we be sure that systems like AX, QBank, or Riversend, for example, can work together and, and build such a huge idea for our customers. What, is the, what are the needs for, for such a cooperation, for example? Um, the most important thing at the beginning is um, to analyze the processes um, on your side and also the processes within um, the IT solutions. And then we can talk about interfaces. Yeah, and um, if we have a good interface between the systems, the more the automat automation is working, then perfectly. Yeah. And uh, what what kind of role is it is your role in such a process in analyzing or in understanding the customer? What is that? At, at the beginning, we um, begin to analyze the processes uh, from the uh, customer because the process is the most important thing. And then we look um, what solutions do you have and what per perhaps what solution uh, you don't have and you need. And then um, yeah, we go to negotiate then the different um, yeah, um, software vendors, um, different uh, solutions on the market. We look uh, at the market and yeah, look what's the best solution for the customer. And then in the next step, we implement then the solution within the IT system, the IT landscape. Okay. Is that still, well, it sounds quite complicated. Find a solution, look for the processes, and uh, then you will find the interface, and then you will build a solution. Um, sounds like a two years way until we can start uh, doing huge recommendation engines, uh, like Ben described it uh, seconds before. Um, is it still complicated or are there changes ahead or what is happening? Yeah, not really. Um, we find more and more standard interfaces. Um, and um, I think the, the technical part is not the really big part. Um, it's also a question of mindset uh, in the, in the, uh, at the client side. Um, you change many things and uh, you have um, to do it with all the um, people involved in this uh, new process and but it's it's not a really huge uh, um, project within uh, one or two years uh, we can get uh, good results within weeks or months yeah 
I want to add a comment here, if I may. Yeah. So I think the Shopify, for example, I think has teach the world that things can be done in a different way. Uh, and I think since that success of Shopify, which even I can do, and just on my mobile phone, right? Even I can do it. Uh, every industry is thinking about this simplicity, but also scalability. So, um, and of course, companies want fast time to value and templated approach because they come to companies like us and say, hey, you've been doing it for thousands of clients. There must be a scale. And the answer is there is a scale. Of course, if things are very, very individual, you need, you will have requirement workshops, implementations and, and long cycles, but there's also an approach to a templated implementation. And we made experiences about using our hundreds and thousands of clients of retail or manufacturing industries and others as well, and build kind of templated approaches, which you can, you take it as a box, you run as it is, and you go live within four to six weeks. And you could stay there forever, uh, or you can continue and grow it per your company need, your volume need, your, your, your individual needs. Uh, so that is already available today. Um, and the question is what, is, what is what is the right fit, right? For who needs what? Well, that, that way is the, the way we uh, prefer uh, to implement AX. We start with a small project, just with the first two or three sentences. And if you want to, you will develop your tax system month by month, week by week, and day by day if you want to. Um, and that's what I think is a, a, the, the new way. Is it the new way? I don't know. Um, to integrate software, or do we still have to analyze everything and understand everything in every corner of the company? Or have we, for example, have we to change? Do we have to change the the license process, for example, or license and pricing models? What do you think, guys? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you uh, regarding the license and uh, pricing model because then you you would allow the clients to be able to start uh, getting started with it with the tool uh, but and and uh, I agree that you need to do your analysis to some extent but I think the most uh, of your energy should be put into making sure you got the right tools which means that it's it's future proof so so that okay if, if we I mean, you can analyze things for, for a year, processes and so on, but uh, in three months, we have a new pandemic with, with lots of new uh, challenges. Yeah. In, in, in those cases, you need to make sure you have the right tools uh, that can adjust to your new business rules, your new uh, challenges again, uh, and so on. So, so for me, I think it's most important to have the future-proof tools. Uh, like Kian said, able to integrate and, and so on with the right interfaces and so on. So just start working with the tool and learn if it fits and cancel it after, let's say, two, three or four weeks if it don't fit or what, what is your idea? I, I think that uh, the tools, uh, the cases and so on will speak for themselves. Like, okay, you see that, okay, this, this tool, uh, they have a good track record. They've done all these integrations and they've, they've been able to uh, create all these processes, automations built on different business rules and so on. So it, then it means that, okay, they can do the work. And, and then, uh, so, so then you start small. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, we changed our pricing on Monday. I'm asking just, okay. <laughs> just to use our new pricing because that's our idea. We want to change that process. We, we want to uh, see our customers testing our tool. And if the tool fits to the company and to the processes, um, then you will integrate it and then you will stay as a customer for years and years. Um, and if, it, if there's not any kind of um, use case, you can use AX, for example, or any kind of software, you will leave us anyway. Even if the contract is, is closed for five years, you will leave us after five years, for example, and never work with, uh, with, with my tool. Um, so we changed our pricing just because of that idea that our customers should try AX 
testing it, but it's, it's quite complicated what we are doing um, in uh, distributing and uh, creating content, for example, like QBank, it's a quite complicated process. How will someone see if the, uh, if the product fits to me uh, before he tested it or used it? Um, and I think that uh, the model of uh, proof of concepts is a quite old model. So, well, that's my point of view. Maybe, Hutan, you have another one, but uh, um, I think it's more important to test uh, the software and use it um, than just to analyze everything in every corner of the company, years for years, for example. Um, and after that, you still have, have a decision what tool will be the most helpful. <laughs>